Oh. oh my goodness. What a fish. Thanks for choosing to watch the video. Uh, there's been a slight delay with the Perch Masters while we try and coordinate diaries and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure another one will come soon, but for now, you're stuck with me, but we are perch fishing again. It's February. Um, the grind has well and truly started. Uh, the water is freezing cold, and I think that our best chance of success is to fish very slowly. What I want to do is explore three ways that we can fish slow, and in my mind, that is the Ned Rig, the Drop Shot, and something that I don't see people using quite as much, and that's hard baits. By, by that I mean jerk baits and cranks. Sod's law, isn't it? <laughs> I do a, go to do a video about fishing in cold weather and the sun comes out. Uh, but you are going to have to trust me, although it might look nice and sunny, it is still quite Baltic out here. Uh, it is pretty cold. So yeah, the Ned Rig. Um, now, please don't turn off at this point. I know that you've heard me bang on about it a hundred times, so we won't dwell on this one. I'm sure by now you know that the Ned Rig involves bumping lures like these, little inert lures, um, along the bottom really, really slowly, lots and lots of pauses, and that's exactly what we want in winter. You know, any bait, whether it's a Ned Rig or anything else, the key here is, yes, going slow. Lots of periods of static. Any rig where you can do that, then it's worth looking at. What I would say is mix up certainly the colours and definitely the profiles of the lures that you're using on the Ned Rig. Um, we don't any longer just have to use either squirms or TRDs. You know, there's a lot of different profiles out there now to choose from. So try different sizes, try maybe trimming them, maybe using um, something like a Reggie, but then another time you might, might use like a TRD or a squirm. So switch up the profiles because there's more options now than there certainly used to be. Just consider that when you are fishing this slow, I think the fish have got more time to study the lure, if you know what I mean. They're not doing, it's not reaction strikes now, they're looking at it and you'll be surprised, I think, how long they're looking at it before they decide to hit it. Um, it's not like reaction strikes, it's, it's, you know, they really are looking at it. So that's why it's important to switch things up and hopefully eventually you'll find a colour and a pattern on the Ned Rig that will eventually trip one up. Hopefully through my previous videos, you can see that um, uh, on the Ned Rig, you can scale right down, have a lot of fun catching smaller fish, um, but equally you can go for the larger squirms or TRDs and you know, be a hero and catch that fish of your dreams. Either way, it's a great method when it gets cold. Uh, the fish will be starting to bulk up now towards the end of the February. They'll be getting very fat and the Ned Rig could be the rig that helps you smash that PB. Very cold conditions, haven't stopped us coming out this morning. And look at him, isn't he stunning? Fishing the Ned Rig, really slow, bumping a squirm along the bottom. Absolutely stunning. The squirms on the Ned are still something that I use today. They're still catching fish, even in some very, very tricky conditions. I've put a few links in the description of the video to uh, some other videos that I've done of me fishing with the Ned Rig. You might have noticed that I don't use the drop shot quite as much as I do the Ned rig, but again, it is a rig that can be fished nice and slow, you know, just twitching it every now and then, long pauses, and again, that is what we need in cold water. Maybe think about setting the lure uh, a little bit lower than you might do in mild conditions. You know, you, you, some people, I think you forget that you can actually set a drop shot so it's really quite close to the bottom, and, um, yeah, it's not, not a bad shout, I think, because those fish might be hugging the bottom in deep water when it gets cold. 
don't be tempted to overwork the lure on a drop shot. Make sure that you are fishing it nice and slow. Um, you know, you don't have to twitch it anywhere near as much as you think you probably do. I always look at the lure in the water. Um, what I'm trying to achieve with the drop shot is that I'm trying to get it to drop really, really slowly in the water. Um, now, whether it's a worm style lure or a, or a small sort of like pintail or paddle tail or, or whatever it is that you're using, I, I kind of want it to either suspend or, 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 or drop very, very slowly. Personally, I like to use lures that are almost buoyant uh, and then you can just, uh, you can either add a tungsten bead or you can just nibble off a bit of the rubber to try and get that, that, that very slow drop. What I would suggest is to go and look at the Perch Masters with Matt. Um, he's a bit of a maestro when it comes to the drop shot. It was interesting to listen to his approach. I've put a link or a card here so you can link across to it and have a look. Um, it was interesting to see the types of lures that he uses. Uh, very sort of slim profile, almost worm style lures. Uh, not that dissimilar to some of the lures that I use on the drop shot. Um, I use uh, the salt shakers quite a lot. Uh, very slim, sort of natural coloured worm style lures almost. And uh, you've also seen me using the squirrel tails by uh, Big Bite Baits. Again, worm style lures fall very, very slowly in the water on the drop shot. Needless to say, my perch master's journey has made me think about the drop shot more and has certainly made me think that I should probably be using it more, uh, certainly in these cold conditions. And now I'm going to actually get up, I'm going to do a bit of fishing because um, I want to show you something that I've really switched on to this year uh, when all else fails and that is using hard baits and by that I mean crank baits and jerk baits. They're not just for warm conditions, uh, I've actually been doing all right on them uh, even when it's really cold. So many people might think that crankbaits and jerkbaits are, are, are really lures to use maybe in milder conditions in the autumn when the perch are chasing, you know, when you're getting those reaction strikes and they actually are very good in that scenario. But what I've really switched on to uh, this year in particular is how effective they can be in cold conditions. Really with the crankbaits and the jerkbaits, um, it really is that you change your retrieve in cold water. Uh, you know, in the winter. Uh, it's just slightly different to how I would retrieve hard baits in the, in the, in the milder months. Um, I'll take you through that in a second, but before that, let's have a look at the rod, the reel, the, the, the braid, the leader, uh, and, and the setup that I use for this style of fishing. In terms of the rod, this is a ZT, uh, and it's the, um, this is the 18 gram. Um, I do want a fairly stiff rod for this type of fishing. I just feel a stiffer rod helps me uh, stay connected to the lure. I don't want like a one to eight gram finesse rod for this style of fishing because I've got a lure that I want to work through the water. So I do find the 18 gram is about right. Oh, you know, with the larger twitch baits and the larger jerk baits, quite happily step up to the 25 gram. Uh, but this is the 18. On it, I've sort of created a bit of a hybrid reel with a nice big spool, but you know, this is the Inferno. Could quite happily use the switch on it as well. This just happens to be what I've got on the rod. It's loaded with 11 pound Illuminate braid. On some of the larger rivers, quite happily step that up to 25, but sometimes, particularly with the twitch baits, they're suspended up in the water and I don't want really thick braid um, coming through the water. So yeah, ideally I think 11 pounds fine. Onto the braid, um, I've got a length of about three or four foot of 10 pound fluorocarbon. And then I've got a fine wire trace. Um, if, uh, and I've made this one up myself. Um, if you're not sure how to make up a trace, I will put a link in the description and maybe on the screen here somewhere to the last video that I did called Dawn and Dusk. Uh, and in that video, I'll show you how to make up these traces. But I would definitely use a wire trace when you're using crankbaits and jerkbaits because whilst the perch love them, the pike love them too. 
Onto the end, I've got a rattling hornet. You've probably seen me use these in other videos as well, particularly in the summer for chub and stuff like that. I do get perch on these as well. Um, as you can probably see, I've taken the front set of trebles off. That's just something that I always do in my crankbaits. Let's get this out into the canal and I'll take you through how I retrieve these crankbaits in cold water. So we're going to cast this crankbait out into the, into the canal here. There we go. Now it's going to float because it's a floating crankbait. Uh, so it will start on the surface. What we do is we crank it down until it's close to the bottom and then we pause. And what it will do, you've cranked it down to the bottom of the, of the river or the, or, the, or the bottom of the canal and it's just going to slowly come back up before then you crank it down again. Just a couple of turns, get it down, let it come back up. So really in the water, what it's doing, you're cranking it down, it's floating up slightly, cranking it down, floating up. Now, notice there's a common theme here with all these rigs, the Ned rig, the drop shot, and now the crank. In cold condition, we need to pause, we need to go slow. And on that pause, where it's floating up slightly, that's when you'll expect to get hits. And that, um, is quite different to how I would fish crankbaits in the autumn or in more mild conditions where my retrieve is going to be much more steady. Crank it down, pause. Crank it down, pause. So there you go, that's how I will retrieve a crankbait when it's cold. Let's now look at the jerk baits. Okay, so now I've changed up the lure. I've actually put on a jerk bait now, uh, or twitch bait. This particular one is made by Strike King. It's the KVD jerk bait. This is the 200 size. Uh, there's a size up from this, I think. It's got a slightly longer bill and it will dive more deeply. One of the main differences for uh, the jerk bait, obviously you'll notice the profile is completely different. Uh, but the main difference in my mind with these is this is actually suspended. So it doesn't float like my rattling hornet. This is gonna suspend in the water. And what we want, we either want it to suspend or we want it to fall in the water very, very slowly. Check it in the edge, make sure that it is just dropping incredibly slowly. There are things we can do if it's not. Um, you know, you can sort of um, up the size of the trebles or, or, or make them smaller to get it, get the treble, you know, get that drop rate exactly as we want it but we definitely do want it to sit suspended or ideally just dropping very, very slowly. Um, so let's get this one out in the water and we'll look at the retrieve. So this time we're going to get it out into the canal. It's gonna hit the surface straight away. We'll see it's not floating. Uh, it's dropping slowly through the water. Um, and as the name suggests, now we jerk it, jerk it, and we pause. Okay? We jerk, we jerk, and we pause. Now, during that pause, you'll probably see me winding in slowly. That's purely because I'm picking up the slack. So it might look like I'm not pausing, but I am. <laughs> um, let me show you again. So I'm going to cast it out hit the surface, I'm going to crank it down a bit, now I'm going to pause, twitch, twitch, long pause, you'd be surprised how long you can pause for, sometimes up to 10 seconds, which feels forever, jerk, jerk, and pause, and just keep doing that all the way, all the way to, you know, to the near bank. If you look at this, uh, it looks incredible when you do those jerking actions, because uh, it doesn't, it goes from side to side. It's really quite erratic uh, when you twitch it. And you can imagine that twitch, that jerk, really catching the fish's attention. But then unlike other lures, it's not having to chase it. It goes twitch, twitch, gets the fish's attention, and then it's sitting still. And it's during that long pause when it's sitting still and falling very slowly through the water that quite often that's when you'll get your hit. Very exciting way of fishing really switched onto it this winter and it's definitely worth trying.
So there you go, take you through the crank baits and now take you through the jerk baits. Um, what I'd like to show you now is a little session I had the other day. It was only a short session uh, where I went out with the jerk bait and this is what happened. So much I'm hoping it's a perch, but it feels a bit big for that. It is a perch. It's a big perch. Oh, oh my word. Oh my goodness. On a jerk, mate. Voila. Yes. Fishing with a jerk bait, it's out I've not tried in this spot before. Straight away on the paws. Had this cracker, look at him. <laughs> yeah, just literally a couple of twitches, long paws, couple more twitches, another pause. Eventually, on one of those pauses, it just smashed it. Thought it was a pike, but it was this. What a fish. The other thing to consider, of course, is that in fishing, as we all know, the fish don't always read the rule book, okay? We know that with carp, suddenly in winter, you might find them in shallow water. What are they doing there? Um, sometimes on a bright, sunny day, we're catching pike. Uh, that makes no sense either. So just bear that in mind, because perch are the same. Uh, you know, you think you've got a fish sort of a certain way, but in actual fact, they want it a completely different way. So what's really important is to stay adaptable, uh, be flexible, take plenty of lures with you and just respond to what's actually happening in front of you. I'm going to show you now exactly what happened on this canal this morning. Uh, as an example, uh, a very thick frost, a very cold night. But when I got here at first light, um, the fish, um, they were very active, smashing into the bait fish and um, staying adaptable and flexible is what got me a result on this particular session. Can you see these fish hitting these bait fish? These fish are getting mullered. Right, gonna have to switch things up. <sighs> so, <laughs> freezing cold. Uh, out here lure fishing on the canal, actually, and uh, I've just had one. Um, and not in a fairly standard way that you'd expect me to have one at this time of year. Uh, yeah, crazy. Well, I don't know if you can tell how cold it is, but look, frost everywhere. And yes, we have got a nice little chunky one in the net will not believe what it took. <laughs> Got down here and they're chasing. Can you believe it? Smashing up bait fish. Put a crank on. A little bit loopy. Um, I'm not surprised that they're hitting crank baits because like I said, I do fish cranks through the winter. But uh, because they're chasing and they're active, I'm not putting any pauses in at all. I'm, I'm, you know, just, just cranking it through the water fairly quick and uh, they're hitting it.
didn't get it on the GoPro, but got a nice one on a crankbait. There we are, look, got another. And he's a proper one this time. Just shows you've got to stay adaptable. React to what's going on in front of you. Yeah, boy. And there we are, stunning fish. Proof that you've got to stay flexible. Uh, really cold, so you'd think they would rigs, but they were chasing and a crankbait did the trick. If you enjoyed the video, then please do remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff. If you do get out there, remember to wear lots of thin layers, stay nice and warm, uh, fish slow, but stay adaptable. And I hope that some of the info in this video uh, might help you winkle out an extra fish or two during these tough conditions. I've been out on the river doing a whole range of fishing. I hope to bring that to you soon. I've been fishing for chub, pike, grayling. Uh, I'm sure those are going to come to the channel soon. I think we've got at least one more Perch Masters in us before the end of the season, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, stay warm, stay active, and be lucky. <laughs>